Today on episode 16 of the Play Guitar Podcast, I help you bust out of the pentatonic box, giving you new ideas to get new sounds using the patterns that you already know. Also, I've got some listener feedback, so stay tuned. Welcome, welcome to episode 16 of the Play Guitar Podcast. I'm Lee, and this is the podcast that's determined to make you a better guitar player. No matter if you're just starting out or you've been playing for years, this is the show that'll help you become the guitarist that you always wanted to be. On today's episode titled, Are You Trapped in the Pentatonic Box? I've got some very cool and simple ideas for you to start moving past pure pentatonic playing. It's so common to see the frustration on one of my students' faces when they try to move into different sounds other than the minor pentatonic. I, I like to teach the guitar neck as a whole. I like to spend a whole week getting familiar with each position and ultimately having all of the positions of a certain scale. So, so you don't get into that rut of just playing in one position all the time. And no matter where your your hand is on the guitar, you have the scale you need under your fingers. It's a process, and it does take time. But when you get it, when you're so comfortable with the positions all across the neck, it really puts your playing on the fast track. But sometimes an easier approach may be just what's needed to open up yourself to new ideas. Sometimes small changes can have the biggest effects. I know for me this works a, a lot. Sometimes just taking a different approach or looking at something in a different way can give you a serious boost. So today, I'm going to share a technique that I use to help guitarists who can't seem to get past playing the pentatonic scales. You know there are different sounds and you can hear them and you want to play them, but it always seems like that you ch- just keep going back to the pentatonic over and over again. This is a big problem for a lot of players, and I've got some very easy tips to get out of this rut. I haven't done a lot of playing in the past few episodes, so today I'm going to play a lot of these for you so you can hear exactly the sounds that you can get using these very small changes to the things that you already know. I've also got some great listener feedback today, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Thank you all so much for joining me today, and let's go ahead and get on to the main topic. Trapped in the pentatonic box. A lot of what I've been putting out lately revolves around the fundamentals. I love to show guitarists the incredible return they get just from spending a little time getting their fundamentals in order. There's definitely no way around it when you're playing guitar. If you're lacking in a fundamental skill, it'll hold you back from being able to play the things that you want to. But today I'm going to do something a little bit different. My approach to teaching has always been very simple, and it works. For me, the best way to teach is to fill in the fundamentals and then build on what you already know. It's the simplest, most common sense and effective approach. And today's all about that second part, building on what you already know. I'm going to take something simple that the vast majority of us already know, and we're going to make some very easy, very small changes to it to get some dramatic results. Pentatonic scales never fail to bring a smile to the face of a new guitarist. They make you say inside, are you kidding me? It can't can't be this easy to get the sounds that I love from my favorite songs. The patterns are easy to visualize and they're easy to play. Then when you learn that you can slide that box like pattern that we all know and love up and down the neck into new keys. Well, that's, that's just it. The biggest jump in level that you'll experience on the guitar almost instantly. All you have to remember is one, four, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, four, one, four. Figure out what fret to start it at. And you are up there with rock royalty playing cool, bluesy, awesome leads 
all day long. The pentatonic scale, just having five notes, seems like it would fit into any song. And for a while in your guitar journey, that's enough. But then something starts to happen, a very common problem. The minor pentatonic is what most learn first. It's so very easy and it sounds great. The sounds that you get from the scale have been a big part of the soundtrack of our lives for the past 100 years. With the strong note, the tonic note being the first note that you play in a low E string, it's so easy to know what key you're in. It works over the blues, minor progressions, rock, funk, all day long. It, it, it's really great and it's fun for life. But for several reasons, it's not just the biggest advancement for guitar players. It, it can also be the biggest stumbling block. Some players never move on from the minor pentatonic scales. So this is just a, a quick aside. Uh, let me tell you something that's been really great about having this podcast. I, I have a, a big podcast idea list. It's really a schedule of all the topics that I would like to cover. It's a podcast idea list that I've broken down from week to week throughout the year. These are ideas I think would be great to bring to you. And if for some reason <laughs> at the beginning of the week when I'm getting the show ready, I'm not feeling so creative, I have a bunch of ideas that I know will bring you a lot of value. So I'm good to go. If you've heard the show before, you know that after the main topic, which is always the big part of each show, I like to have some different segments. Uh, when I have time to work on my songs, I like to share that with you. Um, if there's some guitar re related news, I might bring that to your attention. But my favorite segment that I've been using a lot lately is a listener feedback section. I've been in contact with some great people and I really value all your comments and the questions. And I'd like to share that with you on the show. But as I look over the emails and the tweets, I've found something interesting. I love hearing about your experiences on the guitar. And when I read these, I started to notice something. A good number of your messages say that you're struggling to get past the pentatonic scale. As the weeks go by, I keep seeing this problem pop up. And I had planned to talk about what we're going to talk about today, but later on in the year. I'm listening to you. I, I really want to bring you something that you can get results from straight away. So I called an audible. <laughs> today we're going to talk about some easy things you can do to the pentatonic scale that will give you new sounds and ideas. So let's talk about the problem. The main problem I see is that once you learn the minor pentatonic scale, you aren't able to move further. I guess that th it wouldn't be a problem if you didn't know that there are other songs that you need to play music. So it becomes a problem when your ear develops and your playing doesn't. You hear these other sounds, you want them, and what you already know and what you're comfortable with playing can't give those sounds to you. So that is a problem. When I first started playing guitar, I liked learning a lot of different styles. I learned a little of this and a little of that, and that lasted me until I started playing in bands. And once I started playing in bands of different styles, it forced me to delve deeper into that style. I had always learned a, a little bit of blues because it was the basis to so many of the other songs and styles that I liked. But I mostly practiced just the standard 12 bar blues using all seventh chords. It was my standard blues procedure. But when I got into a real blues band, I realized there's so much more to playing blues than just the standard 12 bar blues. The big one was when I was given a minor blues song. It was kind of the same but kind of different. My minor pentatonic scales worked for the most part, but when I played them, I could hear that I was missing a lot of cool sounds. The chords were completely different. They were, they were mostly minor seventh chords. And the minor blues progression just needed more harmony than the minor pentatonic scale was giving me. But what really got me was the turnaround, where I was used to playing a five chord to a four chord to a one chord like this in a regular blues um i remember in, in a minor the turnaround was different it, it was like a f7 to an e7 this is in the key of a to a one minor one 
my minor pentatonic scale didn't have the note F. And I was playing an F7 chord. To my ear, I was missing something. So I tried adding an F note to my A minor pentatonic scale. And that was it. It matched perfectly. So uh, let me play a little bit of a minor blues progression. Let's see what we've got here. Okay. I'm going to play just minor pentatonic. Here comes that F7 chord. I'm going to add an F to the pad. Match the chord perfectly. So all I did, I didn't play anything else, just minor pentatonic, pentatonic scale, and I added an F note. And the one I added the most was on the B string at the sixth fret, and it fit. So I knew the F note was part of the full natural minor, minor scale. So I said, why not try to play the full natural minor scale over the whole song? There was all of the harmony I was missing over the song, and it matched perfectly. I was ready to really play. So let's do a little bit of that. So that's a little, just natural minor over the whole thing. When adding this note to my position one minor pentatonic scale, I had effectively busted out of my pentatonic rut. I, I didn't know I was in a rut, but when I heard all this new harmony I was getting with the natural minor scale, I realized just how much more there was to do. And it still sounded bluesy with a jazzier kind of sound. I wouldn't have thought to try the natural minor scale over my my regular 12 bar blues with all those seventh chords. So this had a big impact on me, something so simple that moved me so far ahead. I've always remembered this and I've taken this idea a bit further. Like I said before, I like to fill in the fundamentals and then build on what you know. So when I'm helping someone start to get out of the blues box jail, I use the approach that I'm going to share with you here today. So let's go ahead and bust out of the pentatonic box. Getting stuck, always playing the minor pentatonic scales. Common if you practice all of your other scales in all positions. But when it comes time to improvise a guitar solo, many find they run straight to pattern one. Even if it may not be the best choice of a scale for the song that you're playing over, it's easy, it's familiar. And when you're in a rush and you don't have time to think, it's a go-to scale that requires very little thought. For some, it may be the only scale that you know. It, it's the most common scale pattern. The one, four, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, four, one, four. We all know it and we all play it. What I like to do to today is set a limit. Today, no, no matter how advanced a player you are, let's set a limit. Let's stick to pattern one. This is going to be our focus today, this one shape. For the moment, let's just forget everything else. Our goal is to take this pattern and make very small adjustments with it. Do some small things to it that are going to start to in introduce some different harmony to our guitar playing. And since dealing with this one super easy pattern, these changes are going to be very easy to play and easy to remember. 
So that's how we're going to move past the pentatonic box shape. We're going to take, make the best of what we already have. We already know. The shape is going to be our gateway to new adventures. And who doesn't love new adventures, right? Okay, so the first and the easiest adjustment you can make to pattern one is to move it. What we're going to do is move the pattern back a few frets. Three frets to be exact. So let's start to play the A minor pentatonic scale pattern one. It starts at the fifth fret with the first finger. You just play the pattern across strings like I just did. It's easy. But what we're going to do is we're going to slide it back three frets so that the pattern now sits between the second and the fifth frets. We've slid the pattern, but now we're going to use a different note as our starting point. We still want the tonic note to be the A, the fifth fret. So our new starting note is still that same A, but since we slid the whole pattern back, what finger now plays the A note on the low string? It's the pinky. Okay, where we were playing with the first fret, now we're using the pinky. So let's play the same pattern from the pinky at the fifth fret of the low E string to the all the way up to the pinky on the fifth fret of the high E string. Do you hear that sound? It's a very different sound than the way we were playing it before. It's a happier kind of sound. What we've done just by sliding the pattern back three frets is change the pattern from the minor pentatonic to the major pentatonic. The major pentatonic is used in so many styles of music, from rock to folk, country, every soul, everything. Um, I'm going to play this right now over a major chord progression so you can hear what this one sounds like. straight up and back A little different sound there Is. That's the major pentatonic scale. Uh, that one was easy enough. We didn't really change the shape of the pattern. We didn't add any other notes. Um, so super easy. So let's try another way to get some more sounds out of the pattern one shape. The next thing to try would be to add a note or two to the shape. This is what I did when I told you about my experience learning the minor blues songs. I added an F note to my A minor pentatonic. That gave me a note from the natural minor scale. To get the whole thing, the full natural minor scale, all we have to do is add two notes to the pentatonic scale. Starting in the key of A, let's see what we're dealing with. The A minor pentatonic has the notes A, C, D, E, and G. It starts over. A, C, D, E. Uh, but the notes in the A natural minor scale, the full scale, are this. A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. So the difference between those two is just two notes. Uh, the B, which is the second degree of the natural minor scale. And then the F, which is the sixth degree of the natural minor scale. So adding these two notes to your pentatonic pattern will give us the sound of the full natural minor scale, just two notes. And you'll have it if you need it. So knowing no, knowing where these notes sit in relation to pattern one, it will put this new sound right in your bag of tricks. So let's see where these two notes fit. Okay, so on the low E string, the B's on the seventh fret. We're gonna put a B and an F into this. So that so the B's on the seventh fret, it sits right behind your second note, which is the C. So that will give you, instead of just one four on the low string, it gives you one, three, four. 
On the A string, we have an F that's on the eighth fret. It sits one fret past your third finger. So on that, so on that string, you play one, three, and then four. So that's kind of the same thing. One, three, four, one, three, four. On the D string, we're not going to change anything. That's still one, three. On the G string, we have a B and it's at the fourth fret. That one's behind our first finger. So it'd be easy just to shift back to the fourth fret and then play one, two, four instead of the regular one, three when we play that at the fifth fret. So we have one, two, four. So, so far, we have one, three, four, one, three, four, one, two, two. Uh, and then one, three, four. That's the G string. On the B string, we have an F at the sixth fret. So we're going to add that to what we normally play. That would give us one, two, four. And then on the E string, the high E string, we have a B at the seventh fret. Just like on the low E string, that gives us another one, three, four. So all together we have this. We added that uh, B, added that F there, added that B there, F. So all together, Adding these notes effectively gives you pattern one of the natural minor scale. You can use this the way we worked it out, or you could just throw in some of these extra notes, the Fs and Bs occasionally, to get more of the natural minor sound. Let me show you just like this. Okay, so start off pentatonic. Throw in some of those natural minor notes. pentatonic throwing a little minor in pretty cool i was using um the f's and the b's in in two different places but you don't have to you could just use them in one place uh at sixth fret put that f in and the b at the uh seventh fret on the high e string okay so let's try to get another sound from this pattern by adding some a few notes uh this time we're going to add two notes again to, but this time we're going to try and get the sound of the Dorian mode. In A, where the minor pentatonic has A, C, D, E, and G. Um, well, the notes of the Dorian mode are A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. And then back to A. Just a bit different from the natural minor sound. We, we need to add a B. But this time we're going to add an F sharp, not an F. When you raise the sixth degree, that F to the F sharp, that is what makes the sound of the Dorian mode. That's its unique sound. That F sharp makes F sharp makes it a jazzier sound. So on the low E, the B is on the seventh fret. It sits right behind your second note of pattern one, the C. So it gives you one, three, four, right? On the A string, we'll just um, play it as normal in the 5th fret and the 7th fret. Now on a D string, this is where we're going to change it. We're going to add the F sharp behind it on the 4th fret. Uh, it's behind our regular two notes that are on the 5th and 7th fret. So but the, we'll shift back and we'll play that 1, 2, 4. So we got 1, uh, one 3, 1, 2, 4. On the G string, we have a B at the 4th fret now too. So we're going to shift back for that as well. Do another 1, 2, 4. So we got... On the B string, we have an F sharp at the seventh fret. Just like, uh, so, well, if we add that note there, you'd hear one, three, four. And then on the high E string, we have the B at the seventh fret, just like the low E string. So that gives us one, three, four. So we have. So 
So adding the B and the F sharp gives us the Dorian sound. And again, you can play it in, play the whole thing, or just kind of go in and out to get that sound. Let's try that again over a minor seventh chord. All right, so here's just the pentatonic. Let's add an F sharp in there. You hear that? It's a Dorian sound. Next, let's try this idea of adding a few notes to the pentatonic. Let's do it to the major pentatonic this time, the one that we slid back three frets to get that major sound. So using this major pentatonic pattern that starts with the pinky at the fifth fret, let's try to get the full major sound out of it, the do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do sound. Uh, since the A, Major pentatonic has the notes A, B, C sharp, E, and F sharp. And the full major has the, the notes A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, and G sharp. Oh, G, excuse me, G sharp. Uh, we just need to add the D note and the G sharp notes to get the full major sound of those two notes. So on the low string, we'll just play the A note with the pinky. We'll just start on the A there. And we move to the A string, the D's on the fifth fret. So we'll add that to the end. So that'll be a one, three, four. On the D string, it'll say, stay the same, one, three, like we always played it before. Um, and then on the G string, we've got that G sharp and it comes in at the first fret. So we'll add that to the beginning. So we'll shift back and, and play that. So that will give us a one, two, four on that string. On the B string, we have a D at the third fret. We'll throw that in the middle. So that'll be one, two, four. And then on the high E, we have that G sharp, and it's on the fourth fret. So we'll play one, three, and then end on four. So it sounds like this. So let's, if you take a listen, it's it gives us, adding those two notes gives us pattern one of the full major scale. And knowing where these notes are in relation to the pentatonic scale, well, it'll let you go back and forth between major pentatonic and full major effortlessly. So let's take a listen to that. Major pentatonic. Start adding some notes and let's add that D. Hear the difference? There was the G sharp. G sharp to A. That's adding a little bit of the full major scale on top of our major pentatonic scale. 
pretty cool. Uh, let's keep going with this. We've, we've got some good sounds. We've got some more. So let's try getting the mixolydian sound, the dominant sound from the A major pentatonic scale like we just did. The A mixolydian mode has the notes A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G, A. Notice it was not G sharp like the full major scale. It's got a G. That note is, that's the note. That's the note that gives it the dominant sound. So to add this sound to our A major pentatonic scale, we need to add the D note and the G note. So let's try that out. There's our mixolydian. So let's figure this out. On the low E, we'll just play the A note again with the pinky. On the A string, the D's on the fifth fret, so so we'll add that to the end. So that'll be one, three, four. On the on the D string, we have a G, and it's on the fifth fret. So we'll add that to the end too, making that a one, three, four, starting on the second fret there. On the G string, we'll keep it the same, one, three. On the B string, we've got a D at the third fret. So we play that string, one, two, four. And then on the high E, we have a G at the third fret. So the fingering will be one, two, four, starting at the second fret. All right, so I'm going to play a little bit of that. Let's take a listen to that. Okay, Mixolydian, let's try this out. Here's the A major pentatonic by itself. It fits, you know. Start adding either that D or the G, and let's start with the, the G. There it is. Fits that seventh chord well. Now let's throw that D in there. There's a D. Yeah, so adding two little notes to that, boom, we've got something that fits over that seventh chord really well, gives kind of a, a fusiony, jazzy, jazzy kind of sound there. So, um, so we got our mixolydian, we got the dominant sound. Um, we can also get a lydian sound from our major pentatonic. The lydian is a mode, and it's just like a major scale, but it has a raised fourth note. So in that, we would have a D sharp instead of a D for the, for the key of A. It'd be just like the major scale. But when we hit that D, you hear that right there? There it is. Uh, so let's, let, let me try that real quick. Let me get a chord for that. There's our A major pentatonic scale. Using pattern one. And we're going to add the D sharp and the G sharp. So it's just like a major scale, that G sharp in there, you just add a D sharp to it to make it Lydian. It right there. Very distinct sound, very cool sound.
So that G sharp and the D, I just bent them each time. Pretty neat sound. So there's there's your Lydian right there. Um, so that's getting some full scale sounds just by adding two notes to the pentatonics. But let's do something a little easier. Let's just add one note this time. One note to the pattern to to we're going to get us the blue scale sound. A lot of people know this that you can add a chromatic note to your minor pentatonic scale to get the blue scale. Uh the sharp 4 or flat 5 note is what we're looking for. In A, that note is a D sharp or an E flat, however you want to call it. It's on the A string, and it's in between your first and third fingers. So if you're at the minor pentatonic that starts on the fifth fret, On the A string, um, it's on a sixth fret, so we're going to put it right in between. So it would sound like this. Here it is, right here, the note. Uh, and on the G string, it happens again on the eighth fret that time. So that gives a one, three, four on the on the G, and then on the next string, it's one, four, and a one, same as always. So the whole thing sounds. It gives a very bluesy sound with a little extra tension. Adding that note. But what a lot of people don't try is that you can use this same pattern with the added note that we just did and slide it back to the major pentatonic. So we would move pattern one back again down to the second fret where that the pinky starts on the on the fifth fret and play the pattern just like before. This gives you something called the major blues scale. Sound familiar? Let's see here, let's make it sound even more familiar. This sound is in a ton of country solos. It's very cool. And it's easy to do. So just by adding one note to pattern one, we just got even bluesier and we got a little chicken fry. Okay, so, so far we've just been adding notes around the framework of pattern one. Let's try changing a note this time. Let's try just taking one note from the pattern, a single note, and moving it so we get some different sounds. Not moving it into a whole new scale, but changing the flavor of the pentatonic sound. Uh, since playing over seventh chords is so common, let's try some new ways of playing over the seventh chords just by changing one note of the pentatonic scale. So using the A minor at the fifth fret, A minor pentatonic. We're gonna change all of the C notes to C sharp. That C is the minor third of the scale. When you raise this C to a C sharp, it now makes it the major third. And that major third matches really well with the seventh chord. So let's, let's talk it through. So on the low string, we'll just play the A with the um, first finger, getting rid of the C on that string because it, because on the next string, on the A string, we'll add the C sharp to the fourth fret behind our other notes. Sliding back to the fourth fret, that gives us a fingering of one, two, four. So, so far we have. On the D string, it's gonna stay the same. Fifth fret, seventh fret, one, one, three. On the G string, we're gonna raise that C that was the fifth fret now to the sixth fret for C sharp, and then play the D at the seventh fret. That gives a fingering of two, three, starting at the sixth fret. On the B string, stays the same, but on the high E string, we're just gonna play, we'll play that um, that A at the fifth fret. So let, let me demonstrate the sound of this scale. Okay, so here we go. Here's our first note. Here's 
the new note right there, the C sharp. Some people call it the Jeff Beck scale. Uh, you know, it's it's a uh, dominant sound, and we're getting it from our minor pentatonic scale. Just by changing the C to a C sharp. Okay. So that is, that's our dominant sound, the Jeff Beck scale, if you want to call it that, uh, just by changing one note of the minor pentatonic. We can also get a dominant sound out of the major pentatonic, just by changing one note on that one too. So let's go ahead and slide back uh, to the second fret with our pinky on the fifth fret to get our A major pentatonic scale. Okay, so this time we're going to raise the F sharp to a G. Make it a flat seventh. That's going to match, match the seventh chord. So on the low E, we're just going to play the tonic note, the A at the fifth fret with the pinky. On the A string, it stays the same, one, three. On the D string, we're going to change the F sharp at the fourth fret to a G at the fifth fret. We're going to get put that G in there, giving us one, four on that string. Okay? Um, on the G string, it's going to be the same, 1, 3. On the B, the same, 1, 4. And on the high E, the F sharp at the second fret be um, becomes a G on the third fret, giving us two four fingers. So the whole thing is... You hear that G in there, it makes it dominant sound. So let's try this one out right here. Gives us a more dominant sound there. P pretty, pretty neat just for changing one note out of the major pentatonic this time. Uh, the last one of these single note changes we're going to try today uses the minor pentatonic scale again. It's an A starting at the fifth fret. And what we're going to do is change the G to a G sharp. And that's going to give us a harmonic minor sound. Um, so let's talk about this scale. The low E is the same. First finger on the fifth fret and then the, 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 the uh, C. Uh, on the A string, it's the same. On the D string, we're going to raise the G at the fifth fret to a G sharp. At the sixth fret. And that gives us two three, two, three on that scale. Um, and then on the G, it's the same. On the B, we're just going to play our first finger. That's the E at the fifth fret. And then the high E, we're going to... Uh, Jump back to the fourth fret, grab a G sharp, and then slide up back into position for one four. So it's something. See how that sounds over a minor chord. So here's the minor pentatonic. We're going to change back to that G to a G sharp. Two. Hear that G sharp. harmonic minor scale but uses that G sharp the sharp seventh to 
give you a little bit of the flavor of the harmonic minor. So there we are, a whole bunch of new sounds all revolving around the pentatonic pattern number one. It's what's commonly called the blues box. And when you base these new sounds around something so simple as the pentatonic pattern one, it becomes so easy to make a few changes to get a ton of different sounds. Use this to find some new sounds that you might like. Your, your ear will get used to hearing it and playing these sounds in your solos. Then start to find these new modes and new scales across the neck in all of the positions once you're comfortable using them around the easy pattern one. You might now be in your car listening or you might be at the gym or who, who knows where you're listening to this podcast. But the next time you sit down at the guitar, take some of these ideas and start playing around with pattern one. It could be just the thing to break you out of your blues box. I have a question for you. Have you had trouble getting past playing the pentatonic shapes? If you have, what has helped you get past this and open up new sounds for you on the guitar? We'd love to know. Let us know in the show notes. And that's at www.playguitarpodcast.com forward slash zero one six. This is listener feedback. This is where if you have a comment or a question that I can help you with, I'll try my best to help. To get in touch, you can always email me at feedback at playguitarpodcast.com. Use the comments on the show notes page or use the contact form on the site. But the coolest way to leave a question for the show is by my speak pipe voicemail. When you go to the main page of playguitarpodcast.com, go to the right of the screen, you see a little button, hit send voicemail, and that will that allow you to record a short message for me to use on the show. You can also get to this voicemail on my contact page. Uh, real quick, because this has been kind of a marathon session here. In a reply from last week, I heard back from Jason from Melbourne. He suggested that a lot of people get stuck at the pentatonic stage of guitar. So that might be a good suggestion for a show in the future. Well, Jason, I think I agree with you. Great idea. I hope today's episode gave you some good ideas about that. Thank you, Jason, for the message and for the suggestion. I also received this week a great message from Antti. I hope I'm uh, pronouncing that correctly. He's from Finland. And he also mentioned dealing with the dreaded pentatonic rut. Uh, one of the other reasons, um, I, this is one of the other reasons I thought about this topic for this week. Should sent around easy ways of getting around the pentatonics. Um, I hope this show gave you a few ideas to break into new territory using the things you already know as a foundation. So thanks you so much, Auntie, for the very nice message. I sure appreciate it. Um, I had some great comments on iTunes this week. Uh, the first was from, it was, it's Mike341 from Luxembourg. Thank you so much for the comment on iTunes. I really appreciate it. And next was from, let's see here. It was from Andrew from Australia. And he had some very nice things to say. And he said he had, he was recommending the show to his friends. And thank you so much, Andrew. And if, if you know anyone, if you know someone who's struggling or starting guitar, please spread the word. word. I would really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, Andrew also commented on Twitter. He has set himself a very challenging goal about eight months ago. And I think it was to learn the devil went down to Georgia, which is super challenging violin stuff. And it has given him some serious momentum. Um, goal setting is an awesome way of providing yourself with tons of focus and it really speeds up your accomplishments. So good job, Andrew. And thank you so much for the comment and the other comment. And uh, thank you so much. Uh, last I was Chris from the UK. I've been, we've been talking gear. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, my idea for this podcast was to focus on just the, the playing and make gear part of it, but not the main thing. So now that we're on episode 16, I've got this one in the can. I think it might be time for a gear episode. So what are your thoughts? Do you have any questions about what gear to use or how to set it up for the best sound? Uh, what is it? Let me know. I, I feel a, a good gear episode <laughs> coming up. So, so let me know. And thank you, Chris. That was fun. Thank you. Okay. So that's a wrap. The longest show I've done. Awesome. Uh, thank you for joining me today for the Play Guitar Podcast. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to the show on iTunes or your podcast player. 
Also, I'd really appreciate it if you could leave a review in iTunes for the show. If you're interested in online lessons, go on over to PlayGuitarAcademy.com and join my early adopter list to get news on the opening of the site and also an early adopter discount. Also, follow me on all of my different social media pages. Links to them are at www.PlayGuitarPodcast.com. Thanks again, and I'll see you on the next episode.